Hi guys, welcome. In this video, I'm going to talk about the economic order quantity for inventory management. I have a simple example here that we want to understand the periodic ordering behavior for a product that we order regularly. And the demand for this product is, let's say, annually 9,000 units, and which is going to be consumed over 300 or sold over 300 days. That means the daily demand for this product is going to be 9,000 units divided by 300, which is 30, correct? And then this is the daily demand. And uh, the decision here is to make the order size. So how many should I order? I know that I will have to spend 9,000 units, but I'll sell 9,000 units. But if I just order all those 9,000 units, I'll have to keep that in my inventory, in my warehouse, and then it, I'm just going to consume over a year. Or I can become a just-in-time inventory, and, and then I would just maybe take the um, every day, like 30 units, and just get from the supplier. And that worked too. So let's try to see if I just decide to order maybe 3,000 as my units. So that means over the year, I'll have to make three orders, right? So I'll get one order, one shipment of 3,000 units, then I'll use it, consume it, and then another shipment of 3,000 units and another shipment of 3,000 units. So to just understand this behavior, we're gonna just look at this chart, just create this chart. So let's say the order size, if it is the order size is 3,000 units, that means my largest inventory level is going to be 3,000 units. And then I'll start using this from this inventory. I'm not assuming any safety stock here, but you may have some safety stock in addition to this. So that is a point of maybe another discussion. So let's say the inventory is gonna go down from 3,000 units to 2,970 units the next day, and the next day is going to decrease another 30 units. The assumption here is that the daily demand does not fluctuate. It is about the same. And this is kind of a very uh, solid assumption, and it may be a bold assumption, and it may not be true. But even if that's not true, the, the model is still gonna be able to capture uh, the idea and the model is going to be able to give you a robust solution. The economic order quantity model, if the, even if the uh, inputs are not very uh, accurate, if we make some mistakes in these uh, inputs, the result is not going to be affected by this much. Yes, it is going to be affected by not much within certain boundaries. So I'm going to just put an if statement here and say that if this value is, let's say if it drops down to 30 units, if it drops down to 30 units, let's just put that in the daily demand value or just put a 30. And if that's true, then I'll get a new shipment of 33,000 units. And that is my order size. And put my dollar sign there. So that I won't just move that location when I go down. Otherwise, it is going to be just the value that we see here, okay? And minus, minus the daily demand, that is, we're gonna put that with a dollar sign. And that's it here, so 2,970, and double click on it. And we are seeing that the, the value is going down and then it goes down to 30 in 100 days, then goes back to 3,000 again. So let's see how that looks in a chart, a control shift and down arrow. We'll just look at the scatter chart. Let's take a look at that from this, okay? And this is my inventory level, control X, just put that in somewhere at the top. And here we go. So this is showing us that roughly, it's not going to be like that, but this is going to look like they have the shape, the inventory level. So it's going to start with 3,000, it's going to go down to zero, then we'll get an 
new shipment of 3,000 units, it's going to go down, go up, and go down again. It's a sawtooth shape. Let's say if I change my order size to 4,500 units, what's going to happen is, if you realize that I'm just using the, the exact multiples of 30, and so that I'll just get a good graph there. So this is going to be just two. And let's say if I have um, maybe just 900 units as my order size, then I'll have my multiple orders, which is 10 orders that we're going to be seeing here throughout the, the year. So in that case, let's just try to see how can we look at the average inventory. And the average inventory is going to be the, the order size is here, right? So it's right at the top and then goes down to zero. It goes down to zero at the end of the day and just gets a new replenishment. And that means the average inventory is going to be the average of this order size. And we'll just take a look at that and the order size and divide it by two, it is going to be the average inventory. So Q by two is the average inventory, 450. So if I change this back to 4,500 and the average inventory goes up to 2,250, so it starts with 4,500, goes down to zero. So that is my average inventory, but the number of orders. Maybe you can pause the video and think about how can you find the number of orders from this equation or from this information. So in that case, are we back? Yeah, good. Okay, so in that case, the number of orders right now here is two. And how do we find that? The number of orders is that we have the annual demand and then we divide that by the order size. And that gives, gives me the number of orders. So if I change my order size to 900, then my average inventory goes down to 450, but I'll have to make more orders of 10. If I change my order size to 60, then I see that I need to make a lot of orders. So that's one uh, maybe um, disadvantage of or a downside of the, the just-in-time. Yes, you are not keeping a lot of inventory, but you are asking your supplier to just provide you this new shipments every two days. And you are just basically putting the cost on to your supplier but sometimes in total then may also be beneficial for the supply chain or not. So let's just try to see which one, which option is going to make more sense. Is it 600, 900, 4,500? And it depends on the costs. And every time you need to make an order, there is an ordering cost per order. So there is also some maybe um, issue with the, the approach here that I would maybe realize that the ordering cost per order, if the order size is larger than the ordering cost per order, may not be just a single value. So it may be uh, related to the, the order size. So there may be a function there. But here we are just taking all these basic assumptions, but it is still going to work and uh, with with these uh, bold assumptions. So the holding cost per unit, uh, that is going to be on the average inventory that you are keeping every product in stock for a year. And that is gonna cost you $1.50 per product. And that is your H. So let's try to see what the total ordering cost in this situation is. If my order size is 600 units, my ordering cost is going to be order cost per order. And I'm going to multiply that by the number of orders. And that is $3,000. And my holding cost is I'm going to be keeping on average 300 units. And then I'll have to pay $1.50 per unit. And that is $450. So in total, my inventory cost is $3,000 plus, plus $450. And that is $3,450. And is this the best option? Let's just change again the order size to 4500 And now 
I'm realizing something that my holding cost went up and my ordering cost went down. And because I'm holding more, I'm holding more in my inventory. I need to keep this. I need to find a place. I need to make sure that the product doesn't get spoiled or maybe doesn't get damaged and I'll have to pay money for inventory. So that's the, the holding cost. But the ordering cost, I, need, I don't need to order a lot of inventory, like times, and I only need to order two times a year. So which option is the best? To find the option which is the best is going to be, well, you have to go to the data tab and the solver. If that's not activated, maybe you can just do a quick Google search on how to activate the solver. You can go also go to file options and then add-ins and then at the bottom there is a go excel add-ins and then you check the the solver and where's that ti is the shortcut alt and tni is the shortcut for that i don't know why it just didn't here but the solver add-in just click OK so here then I want to solve this and what I want to do is I want to minimize this total cost okay so minimize this B16 cell by changing the B3 cell which is my order size cell and I don't have any constraints and this is a nonlinear model because in my ordering cost my order size is in the denominator so it is demand divided, divided by the Q, the order size, that makes that part of the equation nonlinear. But the holding cost is a linear function, which is just the holding cost per unit times the, uh, the number of units. So in that case, I'm just going to click on solve. And, and let's see here. Uh, so it's not giving me a solution. Let's just try maybe another number and just use from another number and solve it 300 and solve it okay sometimes the solver may not really uh, may stock at a place because there is in the Q is in the denominator the nonlinear solver may just encounter zero there and then boom it may just give you a, an error message so what we are realizing here is that my graph doesn't work now. Why is that? Because of the fact that the the num the daily demand is here. The average inventory is 775. The order size is 1549. So let's try to see. And this is 1549.19. I'm going to just change that into just exactly 1550. Okay, let's just make that. And at 1550 level what's going to happen to the last value that's 20. so if just to make the model work just this shape work we'll just make that if this is 20 not 30 and we'll just get the chart so just to get an idea of how the chart works but we are realizing here that if i just use the exact number that the solver found and i would realize that the ordering cost and the holding cost are the same value and the total cost is the minimum right so here we were seeing like the numbers 3500 3750 but right now the the total cost is 2323 and this is the lowest total cost value and at the lowest total cost value, we are also observing something that the ordering cost and the holding cost are the same value, right? So they are equal to each other. And um, there is, uh, well, we can just find this and make uh, the, understand how this works in the ne next example here. So let me just see if this is sufficient for this video. So it's 14 minutes. So let's just pause or close this video here. And then in the next video, we are going to look at the economic order quantity again with the same values. But we'll see how the ordering and holding cost, where here I just use the term carrying cost. Let's just change that back to holding cost. And the carrying and holding are the same thing, carrying or holding. 
we'll just take a look at this, the same example and approach it from a different perspective. And here we're going to look at the graph of that, not just the graph of the inventory moments, like the, the levels, but the graph of the cost values over the order size. And that's the next video. Thanks for watching.